Videos like these are made possible by viewers like you, who support the channel through Patreon, channel memberships, and stream donations. And don't forget to check out the Bad Weapon Rehabilitation servers at www.badweaponrehab.tf. Check the links in the description for more information, and let's get into the video. Demo Knight. For some reason, a lot of people's favorite way to play Demo Man, no matter how many sentries there are on the other team that we'd all really like to push past, guys. No! For the most part, I honestly can't say I get the hype all that much. Like, I think Demo Knight can be fun in small doses, but overall it's not really my thing. Charges can be kind of wonky, shield batches can be inconvenient, and melee hit reg can only be brought up so much before people start to get tired of hearing about it. I also think that the sheer prevalence of the Islander for Demo Knight players might end up being part of why it is that I find myself turning my nose up at playing the subclass, because I just really don't like that weapon. Using it makes me feel like a jackass, and fighting against it makes me wish I was doing something more fun, like getting my teeth pulled or being circumcised. No anesthetics. On the other hand, Hybrid Knight I think is pretty fun, especially with the Claymore. But the grenade launcher is doing a lot of heavy lifting there by being really, really fun, and I just don't indulge myself in full Demo Knight that often. But when I do, there is no sword I want to use more than the Persian Persuader. If you ask me, this has got to be the most fun Demo Knight sword in the game. The Persian Persuader is a weapon that was made with Demo Knight in mind. And I mean full Demo Knight, not just Hybrid Knight. You get a minus 80% ammo capacity penalty on your primary and secondary weapons, but you gain charge meter by hitting enemies with your melee and from collecting ammo packs. This means if you're playing full Demo Knight, there's effectively no downside, at least if you're comparing it to something like the stock bottle or the pain train. This is a design philosophy that's pretty common on Demo Knight, with the katana doing basically the same thing. The switching penalty doesn't matter if you never have to switch your weapons after all. I really don't have a problem with this sort of design because Demo Knight is so much worse at base level than regular Demo Man that having what's effectively a straight upgrade to stock is a fair deal for getting rid of two of the most powerful weapons in the game as a result of that. And then you have the straight upgrade to all the other straight upgrades and I just want to die. Anyways, I would say that this is the sort that punishes you for not playing full Demo Knight the most with the katana coming in second place and the eyelander in third. The skull cutter doesn't really care one way or the other, and in fact can be seen as a bottle replacement more than a sword substitute in some cases. And the claymore is, I would say, at its best when playing hybrid knight, especially with the tide turner since you get a full charge back from every kill with it. It's not to say that hybrid knight with the persuader is impossible, or even always impractical. It's just clearly not where the weapon's strengths lie and the stats are discouraging you from trying this as much as possible without making your other weapons literally worthless. The katana comes in second place in this ranking due to the fact that you can't switch away from it without injuring yourself unless you get a kill with it, encouraging you to have it out for extended periods of time, or be skilled enough to only pull it out when you can guarantee you'll get a pick. And the Islander comes next because the decreased base health can be pretty punishing if you don't manage to- oh never mind. So the Persuader punishes you for not playing in a certain style. That sounds kind of bad. Well, on paper, yeah, especially since I've said in the past that I'm not a fan of certain weapons that restrict you to a certain kind of playstyle. Like in uh, my last video. So why does this get a pass? Is it just because I'm a hypocrite? Yes, yeah. and also because I think the Persuader does a fantastic job at specializing in the playstyle that it wants you to play, rather than just handcuffing you to it and telling you to make the most out of it the way something like the Backscatter does. Everything about this weapon is about giving you opportunities to push forward, use your charge as much as possible, and be aggressive. And at its best, it is nothing short of absolutely thrilling. Nothing while playing Demo Knight gets my blood pumping, like ping-ponging off of one person into another, again and again, and using my last charge to escape to safety. Does this happen frequently? No. But I will chase that fucking dragon to the ends of the earth. And this weapon gives me the charge I need to keep up with it. It's so goddamn fun. 20% of charge regained from hitting an enemy once, plus another 25% of charge regained on getting a melee kill thanks to the booties, and top it all off with a guaranteed medium ammo box when you kill the enemy, and that means every single person you kill is a guaranteed full charge refresh 
as long as you pick up the metal pack. And one of the things I like most about the Persuader compared to some of the other swords is that it's such a committal weapon. You can't just run in and tank everything with a bunch of leftover health. You can't just use your permanent speed boost and boosted health to dance around your enemies forever. You have to commit. And you have to be precise and intelligent with your picks or else you'll just die. There's such a fantastic sense of risk and reward coming from this that makes my kills and escapes feel so much more earned than if I had just face tanked a bunch of damage. That's not to completely disparage the healthy swords. It's perfectly valid as a game design option to have the heavy hitter melee only character be more of a tank. He can't deal range damage, so he needs to be able to soak up some damage while he closes the distance and gets away from the front lines. I understand that, which confuses me on why Valve sometimes doesn't understand that. And I do find the katana in particular to be fun to use from time to time, but god, I just find this more aggressive alternative playstyle that the Persian Persuader offers to be way more enjoyable. There are of course shortcomings to using this weapon, but hey, there's always going to be shortcomings to playing Demo Knight when you're not using the Eyelander. Or just when you're playing Demo Knight in general. The biggest one I noticed was speed. Now, Dennis, I've heard that speed has something to do with it. Speed has everything to do with it. The Islander speed boost is criminally understated in just how game-changing it is. I really feel like people don't talk about it enough. Playing with any other Demonite sword versus the Islander is like night and day for catching up to people who simply backpedal away from you at base walking speed compared to the Islander, which can catch up to scouts doing the same thing. But something nice about the Persian Persuader is that with how much charge it gives you for basic tasks like hitting the enemy and picking up metal packs, you can plan around this shortcoming much more often, using your enemies and environment to help close the gap on your primary targets. Even your teammates may be able to help provide an unintentional assist. Oh no, our team sentry has gone down, whatever shall I do? But that does lead me to another shortcoming of the Persuader that actually stems from one of its upsides. The fact that any metal pack refills your charge meter also applies to while you're in the middle of your charge. Now if you hold down the charge button instead of just tapping it, that'll actually extend your charge if you hold it down while you run over metal, which is very niche tech but can sometimes be practical especially with respawning ammo packs that you can intentionally account for. But when it comes to random metal packs dropped by enemies or buildings especially, these can be problematic since they'll fill up your charge and reset it to the point where now all of a sudden, you're only dealing a mini crit instead of the full crit that you were really, really counting on. And now you're dead on account of that whole committal punishment thing I was talking about earlier. This is really, really annoying. But being able to pick up metal packs to fill up your charge is a huge part of what makes this weapon so fun. The only way you can really fix this without coding it so that picking up metal packs during a charge just doesn't do anything at all, is if you made it so that killing enemies just gave you more charge instead like the tide turner. But then that takes away from the planning aspect of charging away in the direction of a metal pack you know will be there that gives you a chance to charge again to complete safety. Or even just those especially tense moments where one random little metal pack is the difference between life and death or an assured kill. It's an annoying little concession that I'm comfortable with accepting, but I still reserve the right to complain about it when it happens to me. And one of the bigger and actually intentional drawbacks is this weapon's utility while playing Hybrid Knight. Having not tried Hybrid Knight with this sword before making this video, I really gave it my best shot. But even though this weapon is already a metal pack vacuum, I felt like even more of one while I was playing Hybrid Knight. When I play Hybrid Knight, I'm like 80% grenades until I get into a situation that I couldn't possibly screw up if I tried, and then I go for a sword kill. Or I'll try to get some easy yet satisfying combos by going from grenades into a mini crit sword swing. The Persuader giving you basically a clip and change worth of grenades, and the fact that ammo packs only give you a handful of grenades back, and the fact that you can only get ammo from level 3 dispensers and not anything lower including the payload cart, and that meant I basically had to turn my ordinary Hybrid Knight style completely upside down, which I was definitely not ready for. I will say it did have its moments, but on the whole, I found it to be a worse experience than either Hybrid Knighting with something like the Claymore, or going full Demo Knight with the Persuader, or maybe the Katana. Also, I found that the 25% charge you get back on a kill with the booties really makes a difference. So many times, even when I'd get a kill in the Metal Pack, 
I'm still just waiting for my charge to come back. I don't want to wait. I want to go room room across the map, pull up Mr. Mosby, and commit vehicular manslaughter. But ultimately, most of the other drawbacks I found while using the Persuader were just general Demo Knight problems. I don't like how my teammates getting kill steals actually matters and the guy I was trying to kill drops dead, leaving me a sitting duck. I don't like how my shield bash bonks enemies that aren't even on my screen or how it smacks into level geometry. And I definitely don't like how shield bashes launch people out of my sword range either. And most of all, I really don't like dealing with basically anything that shoots bullets. Or air blast. The Persuader doesn't really fix any of the core Demo Knight handicaps that prevent it from being much more than a meme subclass, because, like, it isn't the sticky bomb launcher. But it does fix the core issue for me and that I normally find Demo Knight to just not be that engaging to play. I just don't care for the playstyle of hoarding all my heads and only ever making the safest, easiest picks on the dumbest enemies to keep my streak up. I want to spread my wings and fly, and the Persuader lets me do that. Maybe it's a bit of a pull, but if I had to compare the Persian Persuader to one other weapon, it would be the Big Earner. And it probably won't come as a surprise to you that the Big Earner is my favorite spy knife for basically the exact same reasons. Even though the Persuader really encourages you to go for this full Demo Knight loadout, I love that the sheer amount of charge I get from it allows me to be extremely freeform with how I use it. In the same way that the Big Earner lets me use my extra cloak and speed boost however I want whether that's to be aggressive and get chain stabs, or run away to safety. How frequently I regain charge means that the charge and charge is now a much more viable option than it might be with a weapon like the Claymore, allowing me to tank more damage and make even riskier plays, at the risk of being more punishing if I fail, since I'm waiting a lot longer on the next charge. But even then, I can at least fall back on a guaranteed ammo pack. I can use the charge I get from a well-timed pick to be more aggressive and go for someone else a convenient charging distance away, or I can play it safe and head back to cover. I know that extra health can also be used for the same kind of decision making, but the Persuader being based around charges makes it feel much more skill based. If you have a bunch of health and you're just tanking damage, that's something you can't really screw up because the fact that you have so much health means that if you are tanking damage, the mechanic is just kind of doing its job but charges are something you can mess up, or something that the game can mess up for you. Why does this happen? You're not just absorbing damage being thrown at you while you walk forward or run away. You're gauging the distance to your next target, getting yourself in just the right position, all in a few split seconds. And if you're going truly beast mode, doing it again and again in rapid succession. I find this to be so much more enjoyable. Maybe Demo Knights who have more experience with the whole trimping thing also get a lot of use out of this in particular, since I'm sure the sheer amount of charges they get on certain maps just let them fly all over the place. That is definitely not me though. In fact, I just learned how left and right scripts work while I was making this video, and it was kind of an enlightening moment for me. Like, oh, this is how people have fun playing Demo Knight, when turning actually works. I get it now. So there you have it. I love the Persian Persuader, but what does that mean for me? Am I converted now? Has unlocking the powers of the Persian Persuader truly convinced me to become a sword swinging, die hard, solar light worshipping, trimping into cannon jumping, Demo Knight TF2 spamming, Demo Knight enthusiast? Uh, no, not really. I still don't really care for the subclass. The Big Earner comparison from earlier wasn't just for the playstyle. There is a lot of annoying bullshit that holds back both Spy and Demo Knight that kinda just makes you want to switch off to Soldier or, you know, actual ass Demo Man for a few minutes and be like, wow, that was way easier and less frustrating. I think I'll keep my teeth in foreskin for today. Besides, I am not abandoning my one true love on this world, the Quickie Bomb Launcher. But those Big Earner Chain Stabs and Persian Persuader Ping Pongs are always calling out to me. And if I ever do decide to swap my beloved Quickie Bomb Launcher out for a shield, and decide that carrying a grenade launcher and wearing shoes at the same time is simply impossible for some reason, I know exactly what sword I'm going to gravitate towards, and what sword will gravitate towards my enemy's craniums. <sighs> Not discreet enough, my friend.
What? Who did I- I killed the spy? What spy?